Hello. Welcome back to the Raw Code Academy. Today we're going to take a look at a project called Tetragon. Tetragon is an EPBF based security and observability tool with runtime enforcement. Consuming policies written by you, Tetragon will run across your fleet of infrastructure and ensure that your applications are behaving. We'll be taking a look at a few examples of what that actually means. But of course, before we get into the really cool features of Tetragon, we need to get it running. So in this quick video, let's take a look at installing Tetragon on to a Linux host. Let's go. So here we are on the Tetragon homepage. First thing we're gonna do is go to documentation. From here, we're going to click on installation. Now, we should note there are multiple ways to install Tetragon. You can install Tetragon directly to the Linux host and it will run as a systemd service. However, if you wish, you can deploy it as a container or deploy it with a Helm chart to Kubernetes. Now, of course, we're gonna take a look at running Tetragon with Kubernetes. It is the best way to run it because it hooks in to Kubernetes resource model and allows you to configure Tetragon with everyone's favorite programming language. YAML, YAML, and more YAML. Allowing us to use custom resource definitions to configure Tetragon is just the easiest way when you're shipping this stuff to production. But if you just want to start playing and exploring with Tetragon, installing it to a Linux host is also just fine. So let's get acquainted with Tetragon, and then we'll take a look at the Kubernetes installation. So from here, we can see that we can grab Tetragon from the GitHub releases. This is all pretty standard, pretty normal, no surprises here. Let's copy this command and run. We can then untar and install. Child's play. Now we can start the systemd service. And I don't need sudo because, hey, I'm root. We can see that Tetragon is now running on our host. Awesome. So now that Tetragon is running, let's see it in action in its very simple form. So let's run echo wall hello, and we're going to pipe this to at where we do plus one minute. This will run the wall command in exactly one minute from now. That gives us enough time to then use the Tetra CLI where we can run get events. Get events is going to show us all the things that Tetragon is aware of in the cluster without any policies or configuration at the moment. And we can already see some processes running in the background. And there is our wall command. And what we can see here is that we got some JSON blobs here that tell us that the wall command was executed with the argument hello, with the pit, the shell, times, all the information that you need to understand the processes on a Linux machine. Now, process management, or at least process visibility, is something that you get out of the box when you are running Tetragon. No matter what command I run on this machine, we will see it in the get events output. Where Tetragon really shines is where we start to enrich or add our own tracing policies, hooking into the kernel and defining a set of actions that should happen in response. So let's take a quick look at adding a tracing policy that shows us whenever someone is messing around with the modules loaded in to our Linux kernel. So the first thing we're going to do is run Tetra tracing policy list. And you can see at the moment we have no tracing policies added to Tetragon. We can run that command again with add, this time pointing it to our trace.yaml. Now when we run list, we can see that we have something called monitor kernel modules enabled true. So let's take a look at our trace.yaml. We can see it looks like a Kubernetes custom resource because it is a Kubernetes custom resource. 
Even though we haven't deployed Tetragon to Kubernetes yet, we're using the same configuration to add our own tracing policies. And here we're specifically adding some K-probes, kernel probes, to monitor for security kernel events, such as module request, read file, do init module, and free module. Now there aren't any actions attached to this policy yet, but what we will see is that as we interact with kernel modules, Tetragon will tell us everything that we need to know. So let's split this session in half and SSH onto the machine. On the top, we're going to run Tetra get events. This time we'll add the flag O compact, just so it doesn't take up as much vertical real estate as we get more logs. To confirm that this is still working, We'll run ls and we see lots of output. So what about kernel modules? Well we can run ls mod and so far we're just seeing the processes that we're running. So let's run mod probe zfs and if we scroll up of course we see the processes that were executed but we can also see after we executed mod probe zfs we have all these syscalls that we asked Tetragon to monitor. Security kernel read file, do init module, all the way down. Now mod probe handles dependencies when you're loading a module into the kernel, so of course we're going to see multiple modules loaded before our mod probe command exits with a successful code of zero. Neat. So we're not going to take a look at adding actions just yet. We're going to dive into that more as we explore process lifecycle and file access in the next two videos. But the takeaway so far it's just that it's very easy to get Tetragon running on a Linux machine. The Tetra CLI allows you to add and manage your tracing policies, as well as to get events to understand what is happening within your system. So, I think it's about time we deployed this to Kubernetes. So, to deploy on Kubernetes, we go back to the documentation. Now, we're going to use Helm, so this isn't anything you haven't seen before. We add the repository, do an update, and ask it to install. We can then run kube control, get pods all, and we'll see that our tetragon pods are now spinning up. And this will just take a moment. Now that it's running, we can do a kube control, apply dash f, using the same trace.yaml we used on the Linux machine. From here, you can run get tracing policy and dash o yaml to confirm it's the exact same module probe we used earlier. Awesome. So that's installing and getting started with Tetragon. There's a lot of really awesome features that we're going to dive into. So check out the next two videos as we explore how to build automated actions and runtime enforcement file access, and process lifecycle across Kubernetes and Linux. We'll see you soon.